are now locked into the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Here is your host, Brandon Blakeney. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Blakeney, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV, back for another one. Now that we had a week off last week, but I got something special for y'all this week, man. We got a banger. I'm telling y'all, sorry for the wait. Two dope interviews. Got Coach Whit Holcomb Fay, uh, assistant coach over at Parkland, coming to talk some noise. If y'all ever seen it, follow him on social media, Instagram, uh, Facebook, man. He, he's just troll, man. Hilarious. Uh, very opinionated, very dope basketball mind. Um, definitely got to rap with him, got some good stuff, and got something special for y'all at the end of that as well, especially for all my triad people. Um, on the other side, got my guy Pat Green, former linebacker, East Carolina, also played some at with some state linebacker out there as well. Just signed to play professionally out in Washington, so we're going to rap with him about that and just get his perspective on some things since he did play at ECU and also played at an HBCU at Winston State, too. So definitely wrap it up with him. Um, first, man, we got to say prayers out to Milwaukee, man. It's crazy out there. And prayers out to the families, man, affected out there about the victims um, at, during that mass shooting that happened yesterday. Just sad. Um Man, it's just a crazy world we're living in right now. It's just so much hate and anger, man. So definitely just take time out to love yours, man, for sure. Um, And speaking of the world, politics is really going down right now. I mean, honestly, the Democrats' debates have been wild. Bloomberg buying everybody, everybody leaking tapes. Like, who, who, man, somebody mom got Bloomberg on tape. Somebody uncle got Bloomberg on tape. I mean, it's crazy i hear everybody got a tape on bloomberg man i feel like and they just leaking them you know you seen bernie doing big things sweeping the caucuses man he he's going crazy right now but um you know joe biden got a big endorsement in south carolina yesterday too so he's trying to make some headway man but this man bernie people feeling the burn man um now let's hop into the sports world <sighs> Buzz city we getting some momentum going man i was Really, at the point where I wasn't sure about Malik Monk anymore, man. I was I was definitely not on the bandwagon. Last seven, eight games, the kid has been hooping. Finally, seemed like he was turning the corner, and, and he got knocked for the substance abuse. Um, a lot of blurry details right now. We've seen this happen to players like Tyree Evans as well as O.J. Mayo, where uh, the substance abuse gets them in trouble, man, and they end up out of the league. I hope that's not the case for Monk. Hornets got a nice young core, man. I know the wins aren't coming um, at a a vast amount this season, but I think next season and beyond with this young core, Devontae Graham and P.J. Washington, Miles Bridges, you know, Malik Monk, and if Terry Rozier, Scary Terry stays around, I think they, they could be formidable in the Eastern Conference, um, a conference that definitely transitioned, not a weak conference by any means. But I think they do have young talent to compete was also some crazy college games this week. Carolina snapped a seven-game win streak. Or, excuse me, excuse me, a seven-game losing streak. Beat NC State, got the sweep on NC State this season. Um, that's about the only bright spot on the year, to be honest with you. Um, but, you know, time only tell. Everybody's still alive come conference tournament play time. Now, everybody's got to crack at it. If you want to keep playing, you will. You know, survive in advance. Also, Wake Forest, man, the home team here had the 3-3-6 on fire after they beat Duke. And I just, uh, that environment, man, it just, woo, I can only imagine. Just a really special win for Danny Manning. Don't know if it's enough to save him, but just, man, that atmosphere right there on the court. Woo, storming the court like that. Oh, man. Ah, that was just an impressive win, man, double overtime. Um, you know, we covered the pro ranks, talked a little bit of college. Let's go ahead and hop into the high school ranks. Playoff time coming up. Teams really gearing up to win or go home at this point. Caught up with Coach Whit Hocafe of Parkland. Um, 
team that really plays their best basketball, I feel like, around tournament time. Let's dive in with that. Y'all enjoy. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Blake, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. Got a special guest, Coach Whit, Holton Spade, Cincinnati Park. And, Coach, appreciate you joining me, man. Appreciate you having me. Oh, yeah, no doubt, no doubt, man. Y'all definitely have been in the headlines over the weekend. Just got the second dub over Tabor, man. And I know pretty much they've been killing everybody in the city. They've been getting a lot of hype. Uh, what, what, man, how, how y'all, how y'all uh, come to Chris tonight, I guess? Um, I don't know. Came in shell, I guess. Nah. Um. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm really not sure, man. They're they're a tough team. They're very That's deep. Me. Um, but we I think we just really get up to play them. And uh, the two games we met them, we were really uh, energized to beat them. And I think when we put our mind to it, and when we really come out with that energy, we can beat anybody. Facts. And I know you guys rely heavy on the guard play. Um, it's been that way for the last three seasons. I've been covering y'all. Um, these guys definitely play bigger than they're listed. And I know you mentioned Kamian, who's definitely been one of the best point guards around the area for the last three years since freshman year. And uh, criminally under-recruited. I know uh, I, I'm very familiar with his game, but you just seeing him in practice, you know, every day bring the fight. Like, well, what kind of dog are we dealing with here? Um, I don't know, man. It's something different. Um, he's... <laughs> It, when he gets his look in his face, like, you know, when it's time to win the game, you just, as a coach, you just feel comfortable. Um, we've seen him do it time and time again. Uh, to, see him, to see him compete in practice is, is it's not the same as seeing him in the game because he has a little bit more more direct focus when it's, you know, when the game's on the line. Mm-hmm. But he, uh, he's just a gamer, man. He brings it all the time. Practice game, it doesn't matter. He's a hooper. And it's crazy to me because, like, I've never seen him look out of place. I've never seen him play against guys ranked way higher, guys ranked way lower. Like, in any system, you know, it seems like he plays at his own pace. And he's never rattled, man. Yeah, well, it's crazy. Me and uh, – actually, me and Coach Gould uh, from Prep were talking mm-hmm. the other day. And we both said, like, in the three years that we've been watching him play or coaching him or whatever, uh, AAU in high school, Mm-hmm. We haven't seen him get, haven't seen him get outplayed by a guard that he's played yet. No, honestly, like I, you know, I've seen you guys a lot with Team Winston too, man. I know you guys play elite competition. I just, I really have never seen another guard make him out of place or dominate him. Yeah, we have. I haven't either. And I've coached him. Uh, you know, since I've been coaching, I, he's been my point guard mm-hmm. at AU High School, and yep. I really can't recall um, one time. Maybe one time we had an AAU game at 15 and under, a guy named Caden McKinney. He's mm-hmm. from West Virginia. Uh, he gave us 38, but Kenny and killed them too. So it wasn't even a situation where, like you said, he never looked out of place. And he was playing up an age group at that time. Fact. And we're talking about a, a multi-talented guy. You know, I've seen Kenny on the football field too. Um, just from a recruitment standpoint, man, what, what's going on with him? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I think he's just one of those types because he's small and he's not yep. like super athletic. He's not out there dunking on people. He's out mm. there, you know. He's not a, a highlight reel. Um, you really have you have to see him up close and personal. And when you see him, you'll see that he's more special than all those other highlight reels that they're recruiting. Oh, definitely. I mean, we talking about a kid that can, you know, be an extension of a coach, legit, just run your team out there. Um, it's just crazy to me that at least the Winston-Salem states of the world aren't, you know, at least not. Yeah, well, yeah, that was, yeah, that's crazy. I was, I was referring to, you know, everywhere. But, uh, yeah, I definitely. Don't know, I don't know why, you know, right here locally. I mean, it, it seems like everybody should be on it. Facts, so. facts. And, I mean, kids are leader, good, very humble. Um, how have you seen him continue to develop, and what do you think, not saying we're going to put a ceiling on him because I don't want to do that, but what do you think that um, he could do at the next level as far as, you know, skill set? What's he going to bring? Um, well, he reminds me of uh, when we watched Chris Paul uh, grow into uh-huh. what, he, what he became. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, I grew up playing with and against Chris, so yep. Chris, he wasn't always the Chris Paul that everybody saw in the NBA. You know, there was a process, you know, that he developed. And at this age, came in a lot better than Chris was, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe the competition difference, so it's hard to judge. But as far as the things he can do, man, he's—I he's, don't know. I—I I think he can. I, 
I don't think he has to grow anymore or not because I I think he can do it at that size because I've seen the other guards do it at that size. So um, the sky's the limit for him. I would agree as far as that. I mean, we, we see, you know, smaller guards that can't really do much more than score the ball. And if this ain't the case here, you know, you got a, a true point guard that we're discussing here. So I, I definitely don't think that should be able to get some But at the same time, you know, if he's 6'5", we probably got Kentucky call. Oh, for sure. But the, 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 <laughs> the special part about him is that we can be a Patrick Beverly type. Mm-hmm. He can be a Chris Paul type. He can be, uh, I don't know, just one of those scoring guard type. Like, he can be a whole a whole lot of different players. Like, he can be your dog on defense, and he can also be your facilitator or your scorer or your shooter on offense. And I saw the statue that posted the other day. Now, he's leading on the rebound. He's leading us in every category except blocks. Woo! Yeah. That's tough. I mean, I just, I, I, I don't think as far as college coaches that's listening, I got a lot of them that follow me. And I know we're, you're a guy that played pro ball overseas, you know, rapper, all the fame, so very well connected. Um, this, these comments really can't be taken lightly. I just think, you know, you can't really overthink it as a coach. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's tough. You got a whole lot of players around the world, and you got a whole mm-hmm. lot of coaches telling you that they're special and that they're this and they're that. Yep. Um, I wouldn't put this kind of tag on somebody unless I really like. I don't care what the other players in the country are doing. He can go up against any. We we uh we went to play Rapper High School, and mm-hmm. uh, we went to the Rapper University game against Campbell. He's better than the guards that are at Campbell right now. And that's no cap. Exactly. It's really not. Now, he's not better than the rapper guard because those, <laughs> they got some bad guards. Hey, I'll tell you, y'all boys looking a little different the last couple of years, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Carl, Carly Jones and Travis Fields are both uh, great guards, uh, in the, uh, some of the top guards in the Fact, fact. Well, I, I mean, with the season how it is right now, man, everything's so unpredictable. Man, anybody can make a sweet 16 run. Well, you just never know right now. Yeah, yeah. That's true, because it's not, it's not like big-name schools anymore. It's, you know, it seems like it's more competitive throughout. And, I mean, you know, you can appreciate that, it being more evened out. Um, as far as looking deeper into the season, man, uh, I know it's winding down. Y'all are getting close to conference tournament time. Uh, just reflect a little bit. How, how have y'all continued to make strides, you know, the, the preseason? And also, what's y'all's mindset right now just, Continue the ground. Uh, well, Trav does a great job of keeping them focused and um, keeping them, you know, uh, not not necessarily getting ahead of themselves, not paying attention to record, not paying attention to score. He's done a good job of doing that this season. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had to slip up after the tape win, which we probably celebrated too much on. Um, but, yeah, it's really just him leading from the sideline and then came in leading from the court, and everybody's just playing their role. I mean, Amari. Amari is a team that doesn't get talked about enough. Um, and then uh, Wardlow, um, Scott, it, you know, everybody really just plays their role. So, you know, you don't have to have a lot of people scoring necessarily, but there are a lot of people pitching in, and I think that's what helps us. And Scott, man, has really just completely transformed his body. Now, I really took notice of that during the football season. Yeah, he's slimmed down a lot, and he actually the past few weeks he's gotten in him with uh, – with Mike Russell at D1, and, and mm-hmm. he he really helped us against Tate with his big shot rate. Yeah, I mean, I know I see him down there banging with Jacob, and that's uh, that's no easy task. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> and I know you guys coach Jacob, so very familiar with him having a great season in his own right. Um, I think y'all might low-key have the most unpredictable conference, man. I think like any of y'all could beat anybody on any given night. Yeah, the top of uh, us, Smith. Paper, Dudley, and Southwood Gilbert can all beat each other, I believe. And that's crazy thinking, you know, Dudley, they got some young guys, but, you know, they don't really get a lot of hype. But I think they play well together. And Southwood, the, I mean, you lose your whole starting five, and they still lose it. I, I'm very impressed with Southwood. Very. And what, what did you see from them as far as playing style? I know they went through a lot, and, you know, Coach Don Shaver is not with them anymore. Is, is, is it still that same up tempo? Uh, we got running guns. Track. Yeah, yeah, and that's what surprised me because I didn't think we'd be able to do that losing the players they did. But mm-hmm. they're 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 they're. I've 
I actually like to learn how to teach that because I want my teams that I coach, I want to play that fast. And they do a great job of teaching them. However they do it, I don't know how they teach it, but they do a good <laughs> job. Yeah, man, it's fun to watch. It's definitely fun to watch. Well, I know we've been talking about players all around. I definitely want to pick your brain because, you know, we both triad kids, seen a lot of hoopers. So we all do is put together our all-time starting five, no shape, nobody, just random five guys you've seen, guys I've seen, you know, grew up with, yada, yada. And uh, pretty much like a little fantasy draft if you game with it. Okay, now is this is this all time like their career like a yeah career, I'm talking yeah like high school okay okay high yeah, school I, I guess okay so um I'll kick it off um I guess my point guard I'm I'm gonna stay real local with my with my North Side guy I'm gonna go catch your slow mo for the point guard what about you oh you know I'm going to me and share a lot <laughs> hey that's so that's so that's so I like that matchup two dogs going at it. Uh, shooting guard, man, I, I might it, – that I think that's a tough one, but I think probably the best shooting guard I saw around here, most complete, is probably Aaron Wiggins out of uh, Wesleyan. So I'm going to go with him with the two. Okay, I didn't see him play. Uh, my two guard will probably be my teammate from Reynolds, uh, Mitchell Baldwin. Uh, Baldwin. Okay. And I know y'all had some dogs, man, back in the day, especially playing against some Oak Hill teams. Yeah, he was he he's probably the coolest two guard I've seen in high school um ever in with. And see I, I you kinda of messed up my three though, because I was gonna piggyback, man. I want, my three was gonna be Rayshawn Terry. Ooh <laughs> Yeah, throwback. <laughs> I like that. Oh man, three man. Oh. If I had to go with a three, see I don't wanna do that, but I am. I'm gonna go old school, old school. And go uh, Toe Jackson, North for starting. Okay. okay, hey, what well, tell me about Toe, man, for the younger listeners that don't, you know, are familiar. Okay, I, well, I grew, I kind of grew up, uh, you know, around him or whatever. Uh huh. Um, it's just from what everybody speaks of him, he's the greatest Winston player ever. Um, when I was a kid, I used to see him play in the YMCA league. Just he was, mm-hmm. a, he was grown then. Um, yeah. And just seeing him toy around with people, I could tell, you know, what kind of, what kind of beast he was, but. Uh, just from all the OGs that were ahead of me, they said he was the one. Thanks. Respect. Respect. Okay. Um, at the four, I'm going to go Akia Pruitt out of Reynolds, currently doing his thing at my alma mater at U.S. Pembroke. Got to show some love. I love Akia. Okay. I'm a little bit of D1 kid, no cap. <laughs> all right. My four, I'm going to go with my favorite high school player ever, which was a Parkland Mustang, uh, Danny Gason, D. Gason. <laughs> Okay, okay, and what year is my man? He classed in 99. He played at uh, Virginia Tech and High Point University. He, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, his, 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 jer- his jersey's retired with Cliff Carl. That's tough. That's tough. Okay. This one, this one was the toughest one for me for five, man. Uh, it, it, I feel like there's been a lot of a good big men around here that have really gone unnoticed. Um. At the five, hmm. you know who your five gonna be at? Man, that's I'm sitting here. The white I'm thinking talking. like the five. Oh, I that's mean, so tough. I don't, I don't want to keep going old school. I'm trying to think of a new school five. Yeah, see, that's why I had, I had to bring Ray Sean out the bag. But I ain't gonna show up. Think I was just a post 2010 type. But um, I mean, at the five, man, I'm, I'm gonna just have to. I'm gonna have to go ahead and snag Harry though at, at, at the five. I'm gonna put big Harry, big Harry HG down there. Okay, my five. I'm gonna keep my five family and go with uh, old school Kevin Tom. Okay, okay. Coach for uh, Walker Town. Yeah, yeah. I, Kevin, uh, Coach Tom just played in the league, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was nice. Damn, that's tough, man. You pulling the leaguers out on me, man. That's tough. <laughs> <laughs> you said Harry. I had to go with the leaguers. Yeah, that, hey, that, that's a grown man battle down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach, I know y'all getting ready to hit it, man. We're getting close to 630, but I definitely appreciate you joining me. Let them know where they follow you at on social media and the guys so they can just take part in y'all's journey, man. Okay, um, for part for um, my personal is uh, yes, Stuss. It's Y E S S S and then S T U S S S. And for the parking Mustangs, I think it's P M S Hoops, P M H S Hoops, P M S Hoops. 
Okay. And, and then Team Winston is Team Winston at AAU. And definitely check them out. And I know, man, you guys are so active. And, man, y'all, I know y'all, y'all going to start getting some of them guys to come out there to sing, man. Man, I see the, uh, the, uh, the death row post with his tears on there. <laughs> Hey, we're getting ready. We're getting ready for the playoffs, man. It's a, it's a mentality thing. Oh yeah. Hey, no doubt, no doubt. And I'm hyped to see him. Another guy I really like off y'all squad, man, Chase Rory, that really don't get a lot of love either. Oh yeah, yeah. Him him coming back to the team because he was focusing on football, and missing camps to do, missing mm-hmm. training to do, so he didn't play at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Uh, him coming back really really amped us up a little bit. Definitely, man. Y'all's coaching staff second to none. Really just developing these guys' skill set. Definitely bigger than basketball. Coach, man, definitely appreciate you joining me, man. Good luck to you guys tonight. All right, man, appreciate you having me. Hey, no doubt. All right. And definitely shout out to Coach Witt and also uh, Parkland Basketball, man. Always love over there. Uh, let's hop on to some gridiron action now, man. I know a, a lot of talk has been said about the NFL right now, new policies that are being voted on the Players Union. And uh, I know Maurice Pouncey was not thrilled about these new proposals. You know, the season may get a little bit longer. And he's standing up for his young guys. I respect it. Uh, a lot of noise. But it's, also, it's, it's about managing your money, like Marshawn said, like 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 Beast Mode saying. Got to save them chickens, man, because you just really never know. And I, that was a great opportunity to really rap with my guy Pat Green about the professional ranks and also making that transition to play football full time. Like, this is a job for these guys. This is how they are feeding their families. You know what I'm saying? So let's definitely rap about that. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Brandon Blakey, a.k.a. Brandon Lee Lee TV. Got a special guest joining the podcast today. My guy Pat Green out of Winston-Salem, man. Uh, No no stranger to to the hype. Uh, played at ECU, played some linebacker out there, played at Winston State. And Pat, you just making that move to the pro ranks now, man, creating your own path. And uh, just tell us, man, how, how did we get here to this point? Oh, uh, man, just a hot, lot of hard work and dedication. Had a lot of uh, positive influences in my corner. Uh, just, just knowing where I come from, just in my background, just like, living just, like, different experience throughout my life uh, molded me to get to where I'm at now. Uh, I've been having a little minor setback here and there, but other than that, I'm going to continue to prevail and move forward and just make the best out of each situation that I'm in. So tell us about this next adventure, man. I know you just recently signed. And you was telling me you know, you're getting ready. Time with this, getting ready to leave the city for a while. Go chase your dreams and much respect. Um, let, let, let us know something. Um, it all came from a little 707. I want to say a little 707 tournament. But as far as getting the knowledge to play uh-huh. at a professional level, I was doing, you know how they have the teams, like 707 teams, like Fight for Cancer. Things like oh, that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, we had like a, uh, I say it's eight man on eight man. So basically, it's like a seven on seven with with one more person. Okay. So I was just out there, you know, just football is something that I love. So I was just out there playing the game, and so happily, two two coaches came and asked me to play for their team. Uh, one was locally in Greensboro. And the other one is in Spokane, Washington, uh, on the other side of the country. So it's like home is home. Yeah. New Square, Winston, 336, home is home. So you know what comes in comes with being at home, being comfortable, day-to-day life, things that you continue to fight through no doubt. While, you, while you're at home. But then you got Spokane, Washington, where you're, you're brand new, um, you're new to the, the state, the city, you don't know anybody, where well, you can remain focused and not have to worry about things that's happening at home. So just being able to get the blessing to be able to play out there um, this upcoming football season, it's arena league. So it's, it's basically like a next step to where I'm trying to trying to get to, trying to conquer okay. my goals. 
So, so would y'all be in the same league as the Cobras that we got here? Um, I think the Cobra. I think the team that I'm going to is NA. I think it's NAL. Uh huh. And the Cobras are indoor. Okay. Them, okay. They might be the ring league. Don't get don't uh, quote me on it. Yeah, no, yeah. I know it's a few different ones, man. It can get hard to keep up with something. I know it's a few different ones. So yeah, just um, I'm just going out there to make the best of my opportunity. They always say. Don't count your opportunities, make your opportunities count. So this has been another open door that God has given me to be able to conquer my dreams. Hey, man, I love to hear that. Uh, um, do you know anything about Washington, bro? Did you get to go out there for a visit? Have you ever been out that way or to the West Coast at all? Man, I'm just – the only time I've been out to the West Coast is when I played at East Carolina. And we okay. played uh, BYU. We was out there in Utah. Other than that, I've okay. been out to the West Coast. <laughs> so everything, everything <laughs> yes. So everything's going to be new to me. So that's, you that's why I think I'm going to use that to my advantage. That fact, but you go out there. You know what I'm saying? Do you? What are you? What are you most looking forward to? I know that they known for the rain out there, but it's a it's a lot of cool things. Um, I hope you like coffee, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna need a lot of it and hot cocoa probably. That's for the month of March until it gets like April, maybe closer to May. I'm gonna still need my big coat on. Luckily, luckily I got what? How you say it? Eddie Bar. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I should be I should be good, but the thing that something that I'm looking forward to is basically the new scenery. Uh um I heard they got some nice ski slopes out there, so I might try them out. Hey man, you gotta learn something new out there. <laughs> How wrong is that? <laughs> yeah, man. So it's just I'm just I'm just like I said before, I'm just blessed with the opportunity and I'm just ready. To go out there and fight for a position on the team, yeah. Hopefully, if the I'm pretty sure the program's good, but hopefully I can be a turning point in the program. Hopefully, I'm gonna, I mean, even though I'm gonna be new, I want to be called. I want to be a leader. Well, what, what, are the, what are the coaches tell you? How do they see you fitting in on the locker? And what do you think your game is gonna bring to the next level for people that haven't seen you play? A lot of versatility. You 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 witnessed it in high school. Yep. I played receiver and linebacker at the same time, and I'm going to be able to utilize that as an advantage also. Now, not only, not only just being one position, but I can play more than one position if they need me to. Hey, that's important, man. That's definitely important, especially when we play Iron Man football. You know, depth is key. Injuries happen, so it's definitely, you know what I'm saying, more versatile. The better. We we've been saying that in that field with guys like Taylor Hill getting paid. You know what I'm saying? Play all over the field. Yeah. Well, that's what's yeah, up. And it's and I feel like it's all about the system that you're in. Yeah. This system. Uh, somebody that cannot be as good as another person, but if you're in the right system, I feel like you'll be in a great position to to achieve many things. Hey, that's true, man. Well, I think we see we see that a lot with like the Patriots and a lot of college programs too. Just you know, good coaches bring the best out of their players. But how do, how do all your people feel about you leaving friends and family? Oh, uh, they're just looking at it as another opportunity and another open door for me to be to do what I want to do. Cause look, working working for working for people is it, it's it's been kind of tough, you know. Oh, I, I, I rather I work for somebody doing what I love. Yes. Hey, that's our generation, bro. Everybody is innovating out here, man. That 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 typical nine to five thing is kind of dead. I feel like with us. Yes, and people and people get a lot of people get comfortable with that. And me working, I always you always people always had that dream to make to be a millionaire. All right, I, 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 I want to be a hundred thousand there. Just okay. Just okay. Take a hundred thousand. I'll be, I'll be straight. Cause that's this, this being not many people get blessed to be in situations that I'm in. So, but people still don't know my backstory and how I got to where I'm at. A lot of people, a lot of people 
had things given to him. Mm-hmm. I, I work for everything that I have conquered this so far. Well, you say you coming in with a chip on your shoulder? Of course. I'm 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 going to the other side of the country, and I'm a North Carolina. That's the only thing we do is put a chip on our shoulder. Mm-hmm. Not that it's not it's not relatable to sports, but look at the baby. Uh-huh. He put a chip on his shoulder, and now he's taking over the game. That's what I want to do. I want to be a game changer. Straight up, and, yeah. and and that's another dude that really like I feel like took his own path, believing in himself. Believe you know, he, it took him a little while to pop, but once he did, bro, it was like everybody was rocking with him. Yeah. So that's 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 my that's my mindset. I wanna be I wanna be a game changer. I wanna be different. Like this they're gonna be like that that boy from North Carolina, yeah. Like he like like when Mike went o went over uh to LA from from the woods. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's exactly how I'm coming from with the local line. Yeah. I put a train on the map, man. You know what I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to be legendary. I'm not trying to be one, one of them um I wish I would shoulda coulda woulda. Yeah. As you said. So like I wanna be I wanna be legendary in my city. So moving out to Seattle with a big season coming up, man, new surroundings, new teammates. Um, what, what what is your goal? What is your mindset? What is the successful season in your mind individually and, you know, as a team helping those guys win games? I know you're a team guy, and that's the most important. Mm, that's a good question because there's many things that I want to that I want to accomplish this season. I want I want to be able to – I want people to look at me and be like, yeah, I know – People from people from North Carolina and from my city know I can play football, but it's time to let the world know that I can play football. Respect, respect. Like I know, I see uh, you guys from ECU and with some state making moves, man. Um, how how would you compare? Not to say compare the programs, but compare, I guess, the strides that you made. You know, I know you you were two different players when you were there, as far as crossing over, and how has those two situations? Being able to not, you know, be afraid to start over, prepare you to start over now. Mm. You never, you never think that day will come when you have to, when a coach tell a player like that, y'all have to depart ways just because of some, some, some mistakes on my end and some mistakes on their end. Mm-hmm. So it's like from from me, from my last year at PCU, I. Kind of, I changed positions because I was playing outside. You're not changing mm-hmm. inside, and just my drive drove me all the way from not even being having playing time at the new position to starting nearly the first game. Yeah, and like they say, the quicker some can be given to them, they can snatch it right away from you. And just by me expressing and being me took a toll on me being at ECU because they felt like I wasn't trying to buy into the system. Mm-hmm. But the system that we had before was working, so it's like new coaches coming in, they want us to buy into our system, but they're not trying to listen to how the players operate. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's important, especially when you're trying to establish your culture. Yeah, of course. Like, shout out to Coach Ruff because he gave me the opportunity to play D1 football. Matter of fact, Coach Ruff was a legend, man. I'm just Coach Ruff. <laughs> the coach, the coach, I wouldn't even say think Coach Ruff, the coach from Clemson. Uh-huh. I took a trip, I took a uh, official visit to Clemson, and he told me, like, they had a lot of linebackers already. He was like, he called Coach Ruff that day in his office and was like, well, I was in there and told him, like, I got a kid for you. He can come in and play right away. Due to injuries, I wasn't getting, a, I wasn't able to play right away. You see, mm-hmm. but I was just blessed with the opportunity to see the ins and outs of a business. So now, as far as you, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, you good. Not not as far as Coach Ruff era, but the new era, the new set of coaches that came. Uh-huh. They more, they more of a business than 
the family that we had before. And I feel like and you can kind of see that now, man, because they, they really have struggled struggled as a program over the last several years. Yes. A lot of and, changes happened during that time. And I wasn't, like, in the right head space because um, I feel in my heart that at that time, my mom was getting sick at the same time. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know it until it was, I wouldn't say it's too late, but, and it was December December ninth, twenty eighteen. That's when her last days on the last day on, on earth was with her. But during that time at ECU, it was kind of tough for me because I was battling stuff at home and stuff for football. So it wasn't. It's like trying to put all the water together. Now, yes, it don't miss. So, but uh, I I think the coaches at one time State for giving me multiple opportunities to play for their for their organization. So it was it was a blessing and a curse at the same time. Now you, you made the move. Um how would you compare just one campus lifestyle? Because, I mean I've been to ECU air and what's on state I already know. But just, you know, how you experienced it, um how, how how would you describe the lifestyle both and the different some differences and as far as being at a D one school and a D two school like was your workload the same as far as like workout uh, lifting like was, that, was everything kind of similar? Well, I want to say not exactly. See, at ECU we worked out at least six times a week. Mm-hmm. The only time we work out was Saturday. Well, that that's still a workout because you got a game. So basically, so basically, just Friday we had like walkthroughs and stuff. That was the only time that we didn't work out. But other than that, we was we was at it. It's the I say the mindset of people at East is different than the mindset at people at Winston. Uh huh. Because it's like D one D one on that campus. It's like you have a, a very important image to keep. Okay. Nothing can go wrong on D one campus without anybody knowing. Mm-hmm. Just because you you on that pedestal, you on that high pedestal as a D one athlete, you should act. Yeah. This. But at, at Winston HBCU campus, like they said, the HBCU vibe is totally different. Like you would never catch another vibe at a PWI like you do at an HBCU. You will not catch a vibe like that. Bro, and I know uh, I had just seen you a couple weeks ago at the game from Winston State. Now, did you ever go to any any uh, basketball games at ECU while you was there? Of course, yeah. Okay, so, like, so how would you compare them to, bro? Like, I know that nowhere is really rocking like the game center, but like your experience at both. How would you how would you talk about that? How would you compare that? The atmosphere, the atmosphere. <laughs> unless you, unless you're playing like a big big team at a D one. It's not really gonna be as packed, but HBCU they ride or die for they for they college foot like football, basketball, base, all that. Mm-hmm. And it's like and it's it is it's very it's very great because you see more HBCU small schools supporting athletes, anything that goes on in school, but at a PWI the D one big school you gotta you gotta do a lot to be recognized. Yeah. But they that the HBCU support is very different. So like oh, if, I was, uh, if, if I was if I was if I was if I if I was a kid that was deciding on maybe going to play at like a, a smaller D one or you know like say say if I was deciding to like a a, a Marshall or something like that. Or maybe a North Carolina A and P that's making that move, but already you know, sending out to the league every year. Um, what what would be a pitch that you that that you think would be good as far as telling that guy? What would you tell him about HBCU life there? You know, the the, the positives. Ooh. Mm. HBCU is the positive about an HBCU. They don't. Mm. At an HBCU, if something goes wrong, it stays in between HBCU, unless it's something major. Mm-hmm. 
But if something, if like something just happened to one person at PWI, it's going to be in the paper. Yeah. It's going to be, somebody's going to know. But HBC life is very private because there's people in that organization that can relate to you and where you come from, I feel. Other okay. than the people you are, they're looking at you as you're here to play sports, you're here to do this, you're here to do that. And they don't know nothing about you but and never and don't know anything about what you're going through. But if you find a coach at an HBCU or somebody that's like Coach Russ that's been through different things, mm-hmm. you won't you won't find no other no other how can I explain? Hmm. You won't be as comfortable. How about that? You won't be I as feel like I feel like, yeah, just to piggyback a little bit, man, I, I know uh, guys are always talking about they want that family atmosphere when they go to the next level because you leave at home for the first time. Of course. You're going – that's what – and that's the thing – that's the thing Ruff made, made me about family. That's his thing. Every time we broke down the huddle, every time we broke out some practice, every time we did anything, it's always – one, two, three, family. Like, everything was a family. Mm-hmm. So if you feel comfortable with them and they made you feel comfortable when they offered you or asked you to play for them, then I feel like you should take that. Or that's giving you free school, of course. You, I take free school over any – free school over anything. If it's free, I'm – that's the difference. People people try to go just because it's a D1 program, they try to walk on, and their parents still paying out of pocket for school. Rather than take that scholarship to the D2. Exactly. exactly. Or D1 AA. You still get the same opportunity, amount of opportunity to do what you really want to do. People, are, they, say, they say you go D1, to show them that you can't play. You go to D2 to show them that you can play. You know what I'm saying? Now, that, so makes like, sense, though. That, that makes a lot of sense. A lot of y'all okay. guys that's moving, making moves down there, a lot of guys have transferred from big colleges down to the D2 ranks. Because either, either, either the, they, didn't fit their, they didn't fit their scheme or they the player wasn't in the best coaches. That, like, it's I feel like people can play anywhere they put their mind to. All they need is the resources and the help to get there. Yeah. So when they get there and they have the right resources and the right coaches and the right everything from classroom to to on the field, mm-hmm. also to mentors, like if you have all that right there, nothing should go wrong. But you never, like I said before, nothing, you never know what somebody can be going through unless you talk to them. That's true. And that's 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 one thing that led me away from ECU. They they was quick to judge instead of asking what's going on. Mm-hmm. So it was like I feel like in that situation it's a win lose situation. Yeah, you're taking a leap of faith, putting your, your destiny in someone else's hand. So it's like you just gotta take it. You gotta take the opportunity and run with it. Hey, respect, man. And I know you definitely looking forward to doing that, Pat. Man, I, I appreciate you making me some of your time. I know you're a busy guy. Uh, definitely know where they can find you at on social media, so we can follow your journey this this year, my man. Oh yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at in Instagram at NFLPG underscore, and also on Twitter at PG thirteen underscore underscore underscore. He said he's getting ready to TV mature on the field this year, though. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, of course. You know, hey, look, you know, see, right now I don't really, I don't really, I've been laying back from uploading stuff because I'm yeah. gonna, my next, my next post is where I'm gonna be be playing at next. Even though I kind of put the contract on online, but I just want people to know like where my head is and where I'm trying to head to and what I'm trying to get to. And if you're not and if you're not here to get me where I need to be, I don't need you. Fact, fact. Yeah, big, big facts. Big facts. Well, I, I definitely appreciate you being fat. 
And hey, bro, if it's if anything it, we can do to keep promoting, man, let us know. So, and definitely thank you again and good luck for out there. All right, appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me. Hey, no doubt, my man. Be safe, bro. All right, bro, you too. Love. Love, bro. Oh, man. Shout out to Pat, man. We know you're going to do big things out there in Seattle, man, in Washington. Um, looking forward to following your journey. Y'all give my guy a follow. Uh, moving on. That's pretty much a wrap for us. I appreciate y'all tuning in for another Thursday. We coming back. I might have something special for y'all. I might drop y'all a little care package on Tuesday. We'll see. We'll see um, how it goes out. I might drop y'all a little care package. But um, make sure to stay tuned for the full interview with Jacob Moore dropping on Sports Carolina Monthly. It'll be running Saturday live at noon on the rundown. Also, it'll be live on my YouTube channel as well. And that'll probably come out later Saturday evening, if not Saturday, then definitely Monday. Definitely tune in to the guys on Saturday and peep that full interview. Jacob Moore out of Mount Tabor High School. Dope interview coming out. So make sure to tune in. Y'all subscribe for all the latest, man. Thanks for all the love. I appreciate everybody rocking with me. And that's a wrap for us. You did?